welcome to the Excel formulas and functions tutorial video series. In this video, you're going to learn about simple formulas. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You ready to get started? Let's go. Just like a calculator, Excel can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. In this lesson, we will look at creating simple formulas. Be sure to download the practice workbook. You will find the link in the description below. It is the same one I will use to demonstrate. The workbook does contain multiple worksheets, so be sure to go to the simple formulas worksheet for this lesson. Let's take a look at our first problem. We want to know how much we spent on food. All formulas in Excel start with an equal sign. I will type in equal. And here I want to add what I spent eating out plus my groceries. So I could simply type in 125 plus the plus sign because we want to add 325. Hit enter to get my result. We spent $450. What is wrong with doing it this way? Well, if I hard code the values in there, then if this amount changes, let's say I spent $130 eating out, then my result does not change. I have to manually go in and change the formula. So that's not how we want to enter. So let's try this again equal, but this time I want to use cell references. B5 plus B6. Now I can type in B5 manually and then add. That'll be the plus sign. And then I can type in B6 again. But what I really encourage you to do is click on the cell reference. So if I click directly on B6, it automatically adds it. It's just good to get in that habit because in the future this can really help eliminate any data entry error. To complete the formula, I simply hit enter. And there it is, $450. Now, if any of these values change, let's say again I spent $130 eating out, the formula automatically updates. See this area up here? This is called the formula bar. My little tooltip even pops up and tells me that's the formula bar. Well, why is this name the formula bar? If I drop down to where my result is in my spreadsheet, I see the result, $455, but if I look up at my formula bar, this is where I actually see the formula, hence the name formula bar. Now let's try some subtraction. So I'm going to move down, and it looks like I have a budget. I have a monthly budget of $3,200, and so far I have spent $1,875, so I want to know how much I have left over to spend this month. So again, we start a formula with an equal sign. Just click equal on my keyboard. Now again, I want to encourage you to click on the cell reference and not just type the cell reference in. So I'm going to click on B11. Again, it automatically inserts it for me. Subtraction, so it's just the minus sign. Now I'm going to click on B12. And to finish the formula, I simply hit enter on my keyboard. Let's try to multiply now. Uh, it looks like I'm planning for a party. I'm having to buy some plasticware, and I'm buying two boxes, and it costs $4.75. So I want to know how much this is. Again, equal sign. Click on B18. This time we're going to multiply, so it's the asterisk that is above the number 8. And now I'm going to click on $4.75 or C18 and hit Enter. I could copy and paste this formula down. That's because this is a relative cell reference. So if you want to learn more about relative and absolute cell references, Check out the video that I have listed in the link in the description area. 
So let's try this one more time and then you can practice. So now I need to know how much napkins are. Well, I'm only buying one box. So what I have seen people do is they just simply put in the 550. Well, let's go ahead and put in a simple formula. B19 times C19. And again, I get $5.50. But what if you decide, oh man, people are really messy, so I'm going to need to get three boxes of napkins. Again, if you hard code something in here and then your values change, you manually have to go and change the result. Okay, I think you're getting the hang of this, so get, go ahead and practice these next two, the paper plates and the cups. Okay, last one. Division. Looks like I am buying new flooring. Got to redo my kitchen. The total cost is $350, and the square footage is 250 square feet. Well, that must be a big kitchen. So to find out what the total is per square foot, I need to divide total by square foot. So again, equal sign, total cost, B25, divided by square footage, B26. Looks like it's going to cost me $1.40 per square foot. Okay, before we conclude, let's talk about the order of operators. The order that calculations are done are first, anything in parentheses, then multiplication and division, then lastly, addition and subtraction. It's important to know this because you could get an unexpected result. Let's take a look at this example. I want to figure out what the tip will be for these two menu items. And I'm going to take away the answer. That should not be there. So I got some tacos and I got a fun drink. And I want to give a 20% tip. So if we go ahead and use a simple formula to calculate this, again, equal. Now, so far, we've been using just two cell references for a simple formula, but it could go beyond two. So I want to take my menu item plus my fun drink and then plus the 20%. Now, we know that doesn't work, not plus. We want to multiply my two menu items by 20%. $9.39. I think that's a bit extreme for a tip. So what have we done wrong? Let's come up to the formula bar and take a look at it. So remember, we know that it's going to multiply or divide first. So what happened was B32 times B33, then it added B31. That's not what we want to happen. So what can we do? So let's go back to our order of operators, and we know that anything that's in parentheses, that's what it will calculate first. So I'm going to take B31 and B32 and enclose those in parentheses. So equal, open parentheses, B31 plus B32, close parentheses. Now I want to multiply the result of both of those times 20%. Hit enter, now $3. All right, fantastic job. I hope you've been able to follow along in the workbook that you downloaded. Before we wrap this up, though, let's go back and look at that party planning. Now, we were able to add up each individual item. Well, what about the total cost of all the items? If we continue to use the simple formula, we would have to add C18 plus C19 plus C20 plus C21. I wouldn't call that a simple formula at that point. Too many cell references. This is where the sum function comes in. Continue to the next video to learn your first function. And remember, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I will respond to you. Okay. Let's go to the next video.